Welcome to Hydraulic Accumulator Sizing Part 2. In this lesson, we will do some exercises together to find some of the properties of hydraulic accumulators. Now, here we have an accumulator in the pre-charge state and we have an accumulator with the maximum working pressure. The problem states the pre-charge pressure of the accumulator bladder is 50 bar. So right here we have 50 bar. If the maximum working pressure of the system is 200 bar, so right here we have 200 bar, find the amount of oil that can be stored in a 20 liter hydraulic accumulator. So this is the hydraulic accumulator that is made for 20 liters. So we see that V0 is 20 liters. Now here we have some conditions that we're gonna have in this problem. First of all, it states all of the nitrogen stays in the bladder, there is no leaking. So the bladder is a system in itself and we don't have any leakage of nitrogen into other systems. Now, two, this is an isothermal process, meaning that this process actually happens at a very slow pace and it actually exchanges all of the heat change with the surroundings. So the temperature of uh, the accumulator is going to be constant. It's going to be the same. So the temperature is going to be constant. And number three, of course, we look at this nitrogen gas as an ideal gas. So from the ideal gas law, which I hope you watched the, the video that I put in the resource part, we know that pressure times the volume is equal to the number of molecules times the universal gas constant times the temperature of the system. Now, Let's write this equation for the precharge state. So we have P0 times V0 is equal to number of molecules, which is the same no matter the, the, the state of the accumulator. So right here, we have a certain number of molecules all around this bladder. And if we compress it, it's the same number of molecules, but it's just more dense here. So this is constant. The universal gas constant R is also stays the same. And because we said this is an isothermal process, the temperature also stays the same. So this is for the precharge state. If we look at the maximum working pressure state, so P2 times V2 is equal to number of molecules times the universal gas constant times the temperature. So if these two, if this is constant, we can say that these two are equal. And we can basically get rid of n times r times t. So this disappears and we can write p0 times v0 is equal to p2 times v2. Now we know v0, we don't know v2. So in order to find the, the volume of the nitrogen gas, when we have the maximum working pressure, we write V2 is equal P0 times V0 divided by P2. And what we get is, we can write this as P0, it's 50 bars, so we write 50 bars divided by 200 bars times V0 is 20 liters. So V2 is going to be equal bar and bar cancel each other out and 50 divided by 200 is 0 0.25 or 1 divided by 4 times 20 liters and V2 is going to be equal 20 divided by 4 we get 5 liters okay but this is not it remember the previous lesson so this volume right here is going to be five liters, but that's not what we wanna see. We wanna see how much oil, hydraulic oil has entered this hydraulic accumulator. And this is actually the delta V that we talked about in the previous lesson. So delta V is going to be equal V zero minus V two. And delta V is going to be equal to 20 liters minus five liters 
and what we get left is 15 liters and this is it this is the amount of oil that can be stored in a 20 liter hydraulic accumulator let's look at another problem okay let's look at example number two exercise two it says here the pre-charge pressure of the accumulator bladder is 30 bars so right here we have 30 bars okay if the maximum working pressure of the system is 250 bars in other words here we have 250 bars okay and the temperature changes from this is new and the temperature changes from 20 degrees celsius so right here we have 20 degrees celsius up to 45 degrees celsius so right here we have 45 degrees celsius how much oil can the accumulator store the pre-charge volume or the nominal volume of the accumulator shell remember the lesson the first lesson on hydraulic accumulators we said when the bladder fills the accumulator shell completely the volume of this pre-charge volume is actually the volume of the whole accumulator now something's different here in the last example we had constant temperature in other words uh, thermodynamically speaking uh, our system had enough time to exchange the heat to the surroundings so we had constant temperature in this situation the process happens quickly and the system doesn't have time to exchange the heat with its surroundings in other words this is the so-called adiabatic process and there is no heat transfer in other words we pull this piston up we compress the gas the gas becomes hotter and we have this difference in temperature now it's fairly easy to calculate this as as you will see so the first and the third conditions are the same as in the previous problem so right here we can write the ideal gas constant for the pre-charge state so we have p0 times v0 is equal to number of molecules times the universal gas constants times t0 now one more thing now we have the temperature in celsius we have to convert this temperature into kelvins because that is the absolute value of the temperature so in order to convert celsius into kelvins you just add 273 so this is 45 45 plus 273 and we get 318 kelvins so 318 kelvins and in terms of 20 degrees celsius we get 20 plus 273 is equal to 293 kelvins so these are the absolute temperatures as well as our pressures which are also absolute so we need our values in absolute so the the temperature changes this doesn't stay constant like we had in the previous example so let us write uh, the 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 ideal gas equation for the charging state or the maximum working pressure state so p2 times v2 is equal to n times r times t2 now we have to put the constants on one side and the parameters that change on the other side so right here we can write so pressure zero times v0 divided by the temperature of the pre-charge state is equal to n times r and here also we have so we have pressure 2 times v2 divided by t2 is equal to n times r okay and because n times r and n times r are equal we can say that these two are equal as well so we write p0 times v0 divided by t0 is equal to p2 times v2 divided by t2 the only thing that we don't know and we have to find is v2 because we need v2 in order to find delta v right so v2 we're gonna write this equation 
for V2. So V2 is equal to pressure zero times volume zero divided by temperature zero times T2 divided by P2. And V2 is equal, okay, so we have the pressure at the precharge state is 30 bars times the 28 liters divided by the temperature zero, which we found in Kelvin is 293 Kelvins. So 293 Kelvins times the temperature T2, which we said is 318. So 318 Kelvins divided by pressure two, which is 250 bars, 250 bars. Now bars and bars cancel each other out as well as the Kelvins. So V2 is going to be equal 28 liters times, now we have to use the calculator, 30 times 318 divided by 293 times 250. So use your, use your calculators if you have one, and V2 is equal 3.65 liters. Okay, so this is the volume when we compress the nitrogen gas right here. So right here, V2 is equal to 3.65 liters. In order to find how much oil we can store, it's easy, delta V is equal to 28 liters minus 3.65 liters. What we get is 24 point 35 liters. So this is how much oil can we store in the hydraulic accumulator when the process is adiabatic. There is no heat transfer with the surroundings. Okay, and let's let's look at one more example. And the third and last example, uh, the most realistic one, because remember when we talked about uh, hydraulic accumulators in the first lesson we said that hydraulic accumulators never actually discharge completely there always has to be some fluid left in order for the bladder to not go into the fluid port and to chafe on the puppet valve so we want to know in this problem the volume of the oil which is going to be usable by the system during the charge and discharge phases so it states the precharge pressure of the accumulator bladder is 90 bar. So right here we have 90 bars. This is the precharge pressure. The maximum working pressure of the system is 200 bar. So right here we have 200 bar. This is the maximum working pressure. The minimum working pressure is 100 bar. So right here we have 100 bar. And the accumulator fluctuates between these two states. So between these two states, never actually fully discharging the hydraulic oil. Find the volume of the oil which is going to be usable by the system during the charge and discharge phases. The volume of the accumulator shell is 20 liters. So V0 is 20 liters. So first of all, remember when we talked about this, we said that in order to find this volume, we need to find the difference between these two volumes. So this delta V is going to be the, the volume of the oil that is usable between these two states. Now the conditions of this exercise are that this is an isothermal process, meaning the temperature is constant and we don't have any change of temperature. So temperature change is zero. So first of all, because we don't know the volume V2, we have to find the volume V2. So first in our task is V2 is unknown. So V2, we're gonna find V2 easily. First we have to write the ideal gas law. So P0 times V0 is equal to N times R times T and P2 times V2 is equal N times R times T because 
these two are equal, we can write P0 times V0 is equal to P2 times V2, and V2 is equal to P0 times V0 divided by P2. This is, P0 is 90 bars, so 90 bars divided by P2, which is 200 bars, times 20 liters. And what we get for V2 is 0 0.45 times 20 liters, and V2 is equal to 9 liters. Okay. So V2 right here is equal to 9 liters. Now we do the same for P1 and V1. So we write P1 times V1 is equal to N times R times T because this is also an isothermal process. We don't have a change in temperature. We write P2 times V2 is equal to N times R times T. These two are equal. So P1 times V1 is equal to P2 times V2. And we know P1, we just need to find the, the, the volume V1. So V1 is equal to pressure 2 times volume 2 divided by pressure 1. And this is equal to P2 is 200 bars, 200 bars. P1 is 100 bars. And V2 is 9 liters. Let me write it right here. So V1 is equal to 200 bars, bar, bar and bars cancel each other out. 200 divided by 100 is 2. So we have 2 times 9 liters. And we get V1 to be equal 18 liters. So this is 18 liters. This is not it. So one more thing. This is the volume of the gas V1 right here. So this is 18 liters. In order to find the usable volume between these two states, we have to take this 18 liters and we have to subtract 9 liters. So delta V, the usable hydraulic oil between these two states, is going to be 18 liters minus 9 liters, which is going to be 9 liters. And this is it. This is how you calculate when you need to know how much oil is going to be usable between these two cycles, which is the most realistic case as we talked in the first lesson on hydraulic accumulators. Now, this is it for the hydraulic circuits section. This is it for this lesson. After this lesson, you have a quiz. And after this section, we are going to talk about hydraulic valves and control systems. As always, thank you for listening and for staying focused. See you in the next section.